Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. It's Monday. We're starting a new series. I want to talk to you about how to improve your prayer life. Now, I know we've talked about prayer a whole bunch, but this is one of those topics you can never get enough of. You need to hear it over and over and over and over again. And I just pray, Father, give us some, some real revelation here on how to improve our prayer life so we can have a more deep, intimate, conversation and relationship with you in Jesus name amen amen well open your Bibles to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 this is the way I want to get started because you know sometimes people pray and pray and pray and they don't get results so they get discouraged and um, and they don't uh, they don't completely understand prayer so here I want you to know something. Here in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, this is telling us that when we're having problems with our prayer life, we can call on the Spirit of God to help us. So, Many times, as a pastor, sometimes people come to me with issues, and I'm not sure how to pray. Let's say it's a financial issue, um, and I ask them, well, are you a tither? And they go, well, I can't tithe. Well, see, how can I pray for their finances when the Bible says that when you're not a tither, you're robbing from God, and you're cursed with a curse? Now, some people say, wait a minute, Keith, we're not under the law anymore. Oh, yeah, the law is still in effect. It's just that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Okay, make sure you understand that. We're redeemed from the curse of the law, but the law is still active. And those of us who don't practice tithes and offerings and giving, as God instructs us, th there's a curse that comes with that. And, and so many times, uh, again, I'm ministering to somebody who's having financial issues, and they say they're not a tither. I don't want to just come out and say, hey, do you know you're cursed with a curse? So many times, I'm put in a position for me to pray for them. I don't know how to pray. God, are you working something here? Is does something need to be done? I don't know. Here it tells me that I can call on the Spirit, and the Spirit will pray and intercede for me with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, I believe that groanings which cannot be uttered, many people think it, think it that it's tongues, and I believe it's tongues too. That's part of it. But I also think it's that that. Uh, effective fervent prayer and we're going to talk about this later this week effective fervent prayer it's that fervency that that heat that fire that's down deep in your gut and and you know there's an urgency that prayer needs is, is needed but I'm not really sure how to pray well here the Holy Spirit God gives us the whole the Holy Spirit to help us in our time of need when we need to pray amen what a great what a great thing that God does for us. He understands our weaknesses. Amen. Go with me to Hebrews uh, chapter 4 verse 16. This is another element that we really need to get a hold of. Again, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. It says this, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we have made, may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now dig this. First of all, if you need help in your prayer, you just go to, go to the Holy Spirit. He'll help you in your, in your prayer life. But here also, we can come boldly before the throne of God. Why? When we're in need, we can come boldly. Now what does it mean to be boldly? Well, first of all, in order for me to come boldly before the throne of God, I need to know that God wants me there. Amen? So that's, that's the first element. The second element, the only way I can come boldly before his throne is to know that I have a right to be there. I know my rights. I know what God has secured for me. So I don't come up and say, God, would you heal me? When God says, I've already healed you. God, would you bless me? I've already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God, would you be with me? I'll never leave you or forsake you. See, we need to come boldly with a prayer that has some, some teeth to it, right? We need to, to, to pray something that means something. So we come boldly. So I might come before the throne of God, and let's say it's a family member that's unsaved. God, I don't know what's going in their life, but they need you. And I'm asking you to do whatever is necessary in order for them to wake up 
to, to your presence and to your love and to your grace and to your mercy and your compassion. And if it means something I need to do, Father, show me, give me revelation in what I should do. See, I come boldly. I don't come, oh God, can you bless me? Uh, can't do that. We come boldly before his throne knowing that we're supposed to be there and then we know that we can pray and, and pray the perfect will of God. Why? Because even there back in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 it says, um, uh, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now watch what verse 27 says. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So here he is praying for us and then he's making intercession helping us in our prayer life to pray the perfect will of God. Boy, there's some keys for you. You ought to chew on that all day long. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.